Hello everybody and welcome to my Fallout 4 stealth build which in my opinion is one of the best Fallout 4 builds. This build has two major strengths. First the enemy doesn't know where you are at so unless you get detected you are quite safe. Second because of the sneak attack multipliers you deal massive amount of damage. Let's start with the initial point distribution. You may want to max out agility because agility affects your ability to do sneak, which is very important for this build. Second of all, I recommend to invest 6 points into intelligence. While you need 6 points to get the science perk, which allows you to craft sniper scopes, you don't need to get this perk right, uh, right away, so you might level up intelligence later on in the game. I prefer to have a lot of intelligence in the beginning because this attribute has a positive effect on how much XP you get. Then you want to put a at least 6 points into perception, since in the perception tree there are some nice perks that require higher perception. Charis Charisma at level 3 allows you to get the Lone Wanderer perk. Now let's talk about all the perks you want to get for this build. Sneak is a key perk. You want to be in a sneak mode as much as you can with this build and more importantly you want to be undetected while in sneak mode. At level 1 of this perk you are 20% harder to detect while sneaking, at level 2 30% harder to detect and no longer tri trigger floor based traps, at level 3 40% harder to detect and you no longer trigger enemy mines, at level 4 50% harder to detect and Printing no longer adversely affects stealth. At level 5, engaging stealth causes distance enemy to lose you. Mr. Sandman is also a key perk because it improves the damage of silenced weapons while in sneak mode. Since in this build you will stay in sneak mode a lot and almost entirely use only silenced weapons, this perk will benefit you a lot. At level 1 it allows you to instantly kill a sleeping person but in my opinion this part of the perk isn't really helpful. What's helpful is this 50% silent sneak damage bonus at level 1, 30% damage bonus at level 2 and 50% damage bonus at level 3. Please note that if you won't be getting this perk right away because you need at least the level 2 gun nut perk that has a level requirement of 13 to modify a gun with a silencer. Another crucial perk is the ninja perk. It increases your range sneak attack damage by 2.5 and your melee sneak damage by 4 times at level 1. Level 2 of this perk will increase range attacks damage 3 times and melee damage 5 times. While at level 3 you will get an increase of 3.5 for range sneak attacks and 10 times for melee sneak attacks. This perk basically allows you to do a crazy amount of damage while in sneak mode. Also some perception tree perks are quite helpful for this build. Since you will be using mostly silent non-automatic rifles for this build, getting the rifleman perk is important. This perk will increase the damage of non-automatic rifles by 20% at level 1, by 40% at level 2, until a 100% damage bonus at level 5. It will ignore from 15% uh, of the enemy's armor at level 2 up to 30% of the enemy's armor at level 5. Another perk to get is Night Person, which gives you plus 2 to intelligence and perception between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. at level 1 and plus 3 to the, these attributes at level 2. At level 2 in, it will also give you night vision while sneaking so you can see much better in the dark and do not need night scopes for your guns. I prefer to get the locksmith perk up to level 3 because I like picking locks and getting cash, valuable items and guns but it's not necessary by any means for this build. The sniper perk on the other hand is quite important for this build. Since you'll be using a lot of scope weapons, getting a more steady aim is helpful. The knockdown effect at level 2 isn't that great in my opinion and the 25% accuracy bonus to headshots in VATS is really strong at level 3. I'm not a big fan of using VATS just from a gameplay perspective so it's up to you if you want to get it. If you do not mind using VATS, getting concentrating fire is really strong since it will improve your VATS accuracy and damage and so you can even snipe your enemies with VATS from long distance. 
From the intelligence tree, getting the gun nut perk is really important. It's overall one of the strongest perks for any build, since it allows you to improve your any ranged weapons greatly, giving it way more damage, improving accuracy, range, recoil and mag capacity. But what's more important for this stealth build, it allows you to modify your guns with a silencer. Some basic guns like the pipe rifle would only require a level 2 gun nut perk to build a silencer. Other more advanced rifles will require a level 4 gun nut perk for a silencer. Science perk at level 1 will allow you to modify your rifles with a more advanced scopes like the sniper scopes that have a targeting system. From the charisma tree, I recommend getting the lone wanderer perk. It gives you bonuses if you are traveling without a companion. With the stealth build you cannot really travel with a companion since he will often give you away, so getting this perk will benefit you a lot. At level 1 you will take 50% less damage and can carry 50 more weight. At level 2 you will take 30% less damage and can carry 100 more weight. And at level 3 you do 25% more damage while without a companion. Why not necessary for this build? I like to get the level 1 local leader perk because it makes building and improving settlements so much easier. But if you're not into building settlements, you don't need it and you can also save some points and put only 3 points into charisma. With this stealth build, your defense largely relies on not getting detected by your enemies. But if you feel like you are too vulnerable, I recommend to put some points into toughness perk from the endurance tree which will increase your damage resistance by 10 points which with each level of these perks or put some points into armor from the strength tree which allows you to modify your armor so it has more resistance. Additional to that getting at least the level 1 armor perk is quite helpful for the stealth build since it allows you to modify your armor so it is lighter and get the shadow le lever modification which both improves your sneak ab ability. What else besides perks is beneficial for this build? You can get the agility bubble head at the northern stern in the southeast part of the map. It's on the top of the ship in a corner behind the build shed and it will permanently increase your agility by one point. At Dunwich Borers in the northeast part of the map, down in the mine next to the terminal, you can get a the sneak bubble head that will improve your sneak ability by 10%. You can also collect all 10 covered operations manuals. I will put a link to the list of magazines locations in the description. You can find one at the Federal Ration Stockpile, one at USS Constitution or one at the Abandoned Shack. They are somewhat hard to see since they look similar to a burnt newspaper and aren't as colorful as other magazines. After collecting the magazines you can see in the Pip Boy under perks how many of the convert magazines you collected. Another good magazine to find for this build are the astonishingly awesome tales issue 2 and 7. Issue 7 is located at the workbench in Outpost Simonia and gives you a 5% damage bonus at night and issue 2 is located on a toilet in a cell in Coast Guard Pier southwest of Diamond City. Now let's get to the basic of sneaking. When you crouch you are in sneak mode and as this loading screen explains staying hidden in sneak mode is affected by a variety of factors like light levels, noise generated, clothing weight and enemy sight. While in sneak mode your stealth status will be displayed in brackets. A green hidden status means that the enemy doesn't know you are here. A red caution status means that the enemy is looking for you, might even know where you approximately are and even shoot at you direction but hasn't detected you yet. Danger is a, in the brackets means the enemy sees you. The biggest factor to not getting detected is take in the dark. This is why sneaking during daytime is almost impossible, even at high levels with all perks. As you can see in this clip, while sneaking on the street during daytime will move your stealth status to danger very fast, so the enemies will attack you right away and you won't get any sneak damage bonuses. That's why it's important with this build to fight during nighttime as much as you can. First of all, uh, when you're on a mission, try to fast travel so that you 
ar arrive at the location during night time. Fast traveling to a close by location will take you one in-game hour and across the map it can be almost 10 hours. You can also go into the nearest building, find a chair or couch and sit down until night time, which starts at 6 p.m. and lasts until 6 a.m. At night time you can be on the middle of the street and the enemy might look into your direction but won't be able to detect you, allowing you an easy sneak kill. But during night time you can still get easily detected, if you move into a lighted area like a burning trash can. See how fast my sneak status changes from hidden with far away brackets to caution with very narrow brackets, almost changing into the being detected danger status. You can not put out a burning trash can, but you can shoot out searching spotlights, allowing you to stay in the dark. Unfortunately, you cannot shoot out, out other lights, which makes your sneaking especially hard inside buildings, since they will often have a lot of lights. Sometimes the lighting might be so strong, your night vision from night person perk will actually make it more difficult to see you than without it. If you have difficulty seeing your enemies, you can always use VATS, even if you do not want to use it to shoot them, but just to detect the enemies. Next up, let's talk about Fallout 4 armor for this book. The lighted armor is the better you sneak ability. With the armor level 1 perk, you can also modify your armor with the shadowed mode, which will improve your stealth in dark areas. The lighter mode is also available at level 1 armor, allowing you to reduce any gear's weight. A sleek mode will improve your sneak mode movement speed, but it requires the armor perk at level 4, which I think makes no, uh, no sense to invest into on only until late game. Overall, you should only choose light armor, so either leather armor or light well steel armor. A great option are quest related outfits like Kellogg's outfit which has a lot of protection but only weights 2. Another great gear is Minutesman General Uniform which weighs 5 but has 45 damage and 80 energy resistance, plus and plus 1 to charisma. For the best armor you can get is armor with the chameleon perk. You can only get this armor by killing legendary enemies, but the drop is random, so it's hard to say when you will be able to get it. The chameleon perk will make you harder to detect while in sneak mode and not moving. When you are stationary, you will almost be invisible, but when you move this stealth mode goes away. Fortunately, you can shoot without losing the stealth mode and you can also move very slowly with a sidestep without using the stealth mode. There is a similar effect you can get from your power armor called the stealth boy mode, which requires a level 4 science perk. In my opinion, the investment is not worth it, because even with this mod, your power armor is too easy to being detected. See how fast in this clip my stealth status moves while with the stealth boy power armor mod. While the same spot without the power armor I can easily sneak with the stealth status always at a healthy hidden. Another factor that affects your stealth status is noise, especially gun noise. A shot from a normal rifle will quickly move your stealth status from hidden to caution and to the detected danger. But a silenced rifle will allow you to limit the drop to caution and allows you to move to a safety after a, sil a hit. With the chameleon armor you have a high chance that the stealth status will barely move and you can shoot at your enemies without them being able to detect you. With a stealth bow you will get the best stealth mode. A stealth bow is a consumable that will be activated for 30 seconds. You can find around 30 stealth boys in the commonwealth and you can also buy them, for example from Tinker Tom at Raylo's headquarters. Well, while in this stealth boy stealth mode you can move around without being detected at all, unfortunately placing mines will be detected by your enemies. You can shoot while in this stealth mode without almost any penalty to your stealth status, even if you are close to your enemy. While it's impossible to be detected while shooting with the stealth boy, this is a very powerful tool, so use it uh, the ones you have wisely. Scanning. Another great thing for this Fallout 4 stealth build 
are weapons with the nocturnal perk. Like with the chameleon armor, they can only be obtained by killing legendary enemies. But once you get your hands on such a nocturnal rifle, it will help you greatly. Nocturnal guns will do between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. only 66% of the damage of a similar gun without this perk. But from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. they will do 150% of the normal damage. And from 12 p.m. till 6 a.m. they will do 200% of the normal damage. Note that the damage shown in the pip bob is sometimes buggy, but the actual damage seems to be uh, working properly. Note that this nocturnal combat rifle does 257 damage and a fire rate of 33, which is, gives you a crazy high DPS. To go with, with the sneak mode damage multipliers, you will do 1619 damage and take away with just one body shot on survival difficulty almost all HP from a behemoth one of the strongest monsters in Fallout 4 and a headshot with one shot kill him. This is a monster that will survive two direct hits from a fat man's mini nuke, one on survival difficulty, just to give you in perspective how much damage you will deal with each shot. Now a few words about the sneak attack multiplier. You will always get it when you have a hidden uh, stealth status and you will never get it when your status is danger. While in the caution status you will sometimes get it, sometimes not. In the upper left corner of the screen you will get a message sneak attack for x damage. But if you do not get this message it doesn't mean that you are not getting the sneak damage bonus. Often with many shots fired you will only get it once every second or even a few shots. But the shots without the message will still do the same high damage. When you in caution status and not getting the sneak multiplier like in this clip where I am firing at the gunner with my silenced pistol, switching to another gun will for some reason allow you to get the sneak damage bonus again. Switching the gun won't always work but it worked for me enough times that I'll try it whenever I lose the sneak damage multiplier. There is one more perk that will improve I'm your sneak damage multiplier and it's the cloak and dagger companion perk that you can get if you reach max affinity with Deacon. To meet Deacon you have to go to Boston Commons and start the Road to Freedom quest by following the red brick line to the old church where in the catacombs you will have to spell Railroad on this ring. Once you join the Railroad you can start the quest Tradecraft for which completion you will get a silenced unique pistol, the Deliverer from Deacon and you can ask him to join you. The Cloak and Dagger perk you get for reaching max affinity with him will improve your sneak damage bonus by 20% and your stealth boy effect duration by 40%. To get max affinity with, uh, with Deacon fast you will need to pick locks and hack terminals. You can exploit a safe that can be locked via a terminal. Such a combo can be found at a university point just lock the safe via the terminal. Pick lock the safe which will raise the affinity by 7.5 points and then sit down for 2 hours and repeat the process all over again. There is a bug where you will get uh, the different sneak bonus multiplier depending on which order you get the ninja, Mr. Sandman and cloak and dagger perk. Depending on the order you will get your multiplier uh, from 5.2.4 to 6.3. I recommend to either get the level 3 ninja perk first uh, or cloak and dagger perk first followed by Mr. Sandman level 3 perk. Now a few general tips how to approach combat with this Fallout 4 stealth build. When you need to explore a new location, first scan for enemies. Again, you can use VATS even if you do not use, uh, want to shoot your enemies with it. After t uh, taking a quick look at your location, fight some high ground, bef but before you go to the high ground, go to the entry uh, of the location that is closest to the high ground. There you can place some mines while in sneak mode, which shouldn't get you the 
detected. If you start shooting later on, the enemies uh, will run towards you. Uh, you will have some mines between you and the uh, location. After you found some high ground, crouch into sneak mode and scan your targets again. You might find an enemy that is far away from the other enemies and killing him might not alarm the rest. Whenever you feel comfortable, go for headshots. If the enemies start moving, going for body shots is the safer and better option to choose. Leave the scope mo mode every now and then and if you see enemies approaching, go for the one closest to you first. After you kill all the visible enemies, you can change your gun to a rifle more suitable for close qu quarters and enter the compound. If you come across an enemy that is very hard to kill and cannot be targeted from far away like an assault drone, do not try to shoot at him non-stop. While your first two shots might get the sneak damage multiplier, the following shots won't get the bonus anymore and you might die before you can finish off the enemy. A much safer way is to get as much distance, shoot at the enemy and then move away from your spot. The enemy will probably go towards your location after he got hit, but you will be already in another spawn and the next shot will get the sneak bonus again. Repeat that a few times and then enemy should die without uh, you being detected. In the end I want to give some additional tips for the early game, because this is the part where you will probably have the most difficulties with this build. In the beginning I go for the sneak perks so I am less likely to get detected. Ninja for that sneak damage multiplayer player and I recommend to get the level 1 blitz perk, while later on in the game you won't be using your melee attack, in the beginning you do not have any silenced weapons, so a melee kill is oftentimes the only option for a silent kill. After you get a rifle you can invest in the rifleman level 1 perk for that extra 20% damage and get the gun nut perk after you start your first settlement, so you can improve your guns greatly. Since building a silencer for your guns will be first possible at level 13, getting Mr. Sandman makes no sense. As early as you can modify your pipe bolt action rifle with a scope, try to shoot your enemies from far away, since this way you won't get detected and you will get the sneak damage bonus multiplier with each shot. If you could compare the same situation without crouching in sneak mode, not only won't you get the sneak damage multiplier, but the enemy will quickly fire back at you and probably kill you. Without the silencer, even in the middle of the night, Firing from close range at your enemies will probably get you detected quickly. This is why I prefer to use the melee attack with that, because it's the only way you won't get detected. Even without the blitz perk, you can perform a melee sneak attack from a short distance, but getting the level 1 blitz perk will extend that range, allowing you to target your enemies from a safer distance, and with the greater range you can often target a few enemies at once. Killing each with the sneak multiplier. The melee sneak attack is even great against machine gun turrets. Such a sneak attack will two shot the turrets and they aren't normally easy to kill on survival early on. The biggest problems early on uh, you should have inside the buildings, since many of them are well lit. While sometimes you can shoot out spotlights and uh, sneak around to find enemies sleeping and kill them without any problems in their sleep. In many situations there might be no way you can approach an enemy in sneak mode without getting detected. You can try to shoot the enemy from some distance and go back to a shadowed area, but oftentimes you will just have to have a normal shootout. Thanks for watching my Fallout 4 stealth build. If you have any questions or tips how to improve this build, let me know in the comment section. Please subscribe and watch my other guides. I will end this video with a short clip where I infiltrate the Gunners Plaza on survival difficulty. Goodbye!